So in this video I want to reflect on what I learned during my PhD and more specifically on a kind of a personal transformation and, and a mind shift uh, that I made during uh, after I did I completed this program. Uh, so I'm not going to focus on, on skills, on content knowledge or skills such as teamwork and critical, critical thinking. Uh, there are plenty of materials online about this, uh, this aspect of doing a PhD and I in fact uh, think I also recorded a video about these transferable skills and how you can later use them uh, for your careers outside academia. Uh, like I said, this one will be more about a personal transformation. So the, the first one is in fact uh, a little bit more about the content uh, of what I studied and, and the skills uh, directly, which I directly learned during the PhD. Uh, I said this would be more about personal transformation, but as you'll see, all of these are related. So the first one is simply that I realized I became an expert. I became an expert and everybody who does a PhD becomes an expert, a world expert. I know it may not feel like you are one and we tend to think, of course, to become by definition a world expert, you'll probably uh, need some exposure and recognition. So, you know, uh, when you start uh, to publish, when you start to be cited and recognized and invited to events, that's uh, probably what we tend to uh, associate uh, with, with the word, you know, the, the, the phrase world expert. But uh, as I said, you are actually you are becoming a, a world expert in your in your field, and I uh, realized this uh, during one of my supervisions. I remember uh, one of my supervisors told me I, I I can't remember exactly what the conversation was about, but I asked them something, and and she said, I don't know. You tell us. You are the expert now, and actually this this simple uh, statement uh, meant a lot to me and and made me reflect and, and realize that, in fact, yes, I am becoming an expert because just imagine how many books and articles on the topic you're uh, now reading if you're a student or, or you will be reading if once you start your PhD. You are, uh, you are quickly becoming an expert. You, you are familiar with all research related to your your area, at least all relevant research or uh, all uh, the most recent uh, research as well. And believe me, when you when you finish your PhD, uh, you'll never have that much time to be on top of all these all these developments in your field. You may think that once I finish, I'll keep reading. I'll always be on top. I'll always uh, know these things, but. Even though you may be, of course, if you still work in academia on, or in research, you will be, uh, you will be to some extent familiar. You'll, you know, read some some new articles here and there, but but you'll never have that much opportunity as as you have during the PhD. So in your field, in in your area, in your niche, uh, you really are an expert. You really are a person that perhaps you never thought about yourself as an expert, uh, but if you and you we tend to look up to, to these you know real experts uh, who speak you know on TV or or whatever the, the big names in the field and people who know about things we have no idea about but then like I said we tend to forget that f to some people we would be you know perceived uh, just just the same just as the expert because we have so much knowledge we can you know we can explain and talk about these things and also uh, this uh, relates to to the skills that I gained. So specifically, research skills. Uh, I remember when I was uh, doing my masters, and I think it was freshly uh, after graduation, or maybe even when I was still enrolled uh, in this masters uh, program. I can't remember. I remember I felt like because I, I was taught about research methods. And I did, you know, a little bit of research for my master's, uh, my master's dissertation. I felt like, you know, surely I know almost everything I need to know about research now. And I remember I actually applied for research assistant jobs at my university. Uh, of course, they were looking for, uh, as you may know, they, they always have their criteria. They were looking for somebody with, you know, knowledge and experience. Uh, I, I hardly had any at that point. When I think back, when I think about myself then, I, I hardly had any knowledge. You know, I had some theoretical knowledge, but in practice it was it was not a lot. But 
I kept applying for these for these jobs, explaining that I'm a quick learner and I'll, I'll you know surely learn how to do uh, research. Uh, but but the point is that when I completed my PhD and when I look back at you know at myself at that time I realized just you know how limited my knowledge was uh, and then of course after the PhD I had so much more exposure to research I had so much more theoretical exposure so to speak so uh, through reading but also uh, so much more practice of course because I actually did research so I realized you know that uh, that's also you know that's what I gained from the PhD. I really did become, you know, a skilled researcher. So again, this is another skill that, if you think about it, not not that many people have. Uh, you are expected to do research most of the time, most of the times, and you are you know you are becoming a skilled researcher. It kind of also opened my mind uh, a little bit, and I understood that there is no, um, there is you know no end goal, so to speak. So. Uh, so even though when I graduated, I cons I definitely could tell that I'm more skilled now as a researcher. Now, if I look back, so again, I think three or four years uh, have passed, and I have plenty research experience. You know, plenty more analyzed data sets. Uh, now I feel like an expert. But I know from my experience now that you know I'll keep learning, and and probably every year I will feel more and more like an expert. But but that time you know as a phd student did uh, help me you know make a great uh, leap you know towards becoming an expert towards gaining these skills uh, that training you know that detailed training that you received as a phd student cannot be compared to anything really to any kind of training that you'll ever uh, receive uh, and like i said it, it it will make you realize that you know your own limitations and that you you just keep learning and keep learning so uh, this kind of leads me to the, the, the second point, and I think this is uh, the most important point, the most important thing, the most important transformation and mind shift uh, that I experienced as a result of the PhD, namely that I, I learned to learn and I learned to love the process of learning. So this, uh, like I said, really relates to the previous point. Uh, you're becoming an expert, but if somebody told me uh, before I started my PhD, if somebody uh, presented, you know, the uh, the field in which later I, I did my PhD, presented, you know, the findings uh, in that field to me. So if they talked about, you know, self-esteem, self-confidence, identity, language, intercultural communication, whole, you know, bunch of things. Because as uh, as you may know, when you do a PhD, you're you're really uh, exploring many different areas if somebody showed me that and told me you know how about you become an expert or how do you feel about about becoming an expert I would simply say you know it's not possible it's so much it's not possible so this is a very important thing I realized that uh, it is possible in fact it is possible I explored you know a broad body of literature like I said in that process of, of becoming an expert and what this specifically made me realize is that uh, everything is possible to to use uh, a cliche everything is possible you can if you became an expert in this field you can become an expert in any field uh, not to mention you know uh, i'm not even just talking about academic fields because of course you need some time to become a real expert but but i mean new skills you know new knowledge you know exploring new possibilities and i think like i said this is definitely the main thing about the phd and i'm and i'm so happy i was you know I, there were times when i was disappointed even today sometimes i you know i'm still wondering whether you know it was the best idea to do that phd but but then i remember this little you know this little change in me and and how i understand understood you can learn anything even i'm talking about little things during the phd i just started to explore so many things and interests that i never had before for whatever reason, so I, you know, I, I learned. Uh, I I bought an instrument, instrument, uh, uh, ukulele. Uh, I learned how to play that ukulele. I I learned to meditate and started to meditate. I started to write a book, a, ch a children's uh, book. So so many different things, and uh, I cannot really tell whether you know maybe some of it, these things were just uh, the results uh, of procrastination. Maybe I was just trying, you know, to find myself some kind of a distraction, 
uh, to avoid writing and, and learning. I don't know, but I think it's it's probably both. So this and the fact that I, I started to feel that if you take uh, something that interests you, uh, you can just, you know, you can spend some time and, and become skilled in that or, you know, read that book or learn on that topic or learn that skill, learn to play the instrument. So I learned how to learn. I understood that it takes time. I understood that there needs to be some structure. So even when I explore these topics that I mentioned, uh, so, you know, like astrophysics or something, I know that there needs to be some kind of a structure. So I think it's easier for myself to uh, to plan my learning as well, to make it, uh, you know, more effective. I'm more conscious of how I learn. So, uh, so all of this together. And then again, the little skills that I mentioned, you know, play the instrument, uh, for example. Again, I, I just, I think I had enough patience for it uh, and I probably, I just, you know, I didn't have that prior to the PhD, so I had patience, I understood that it takes time, and again, seeing the effects of, you know, me exploring these broad fields that I was exploring, and actually becoming that expert, I understood, you know, that I can also explore how to play that instrument. Uh, I, I need a book, I need, you know, maybe some tutoring, that's what I did, and then the rest of the time, really, most of my learning was with a book and with YouTube videos, but I understood it's, it's just possible. I would say finally that I think I, uh, what I gained, I also gained appreciation for, uh, for and respect for scientists, for science, for research, for data. So what I mean here again is once you're immersed in that environment and you understand just how much effort it takes, for example, to conduct one study that you're doing, uh, that's when you realize that, you know, actually these experts that talk about things, they may actually have a clue about, uh, about you know, whatever they are talking about. And, and again, it may sound obvious, but what I mean here is that you see, especially nowadays online, you see so many people that seem to, you know, they just, they laugh about science, they laugh about, you know, whatever scientific knowledge and development. Uh, they quickly dismiss whatever they want to dismiss. But overall, what I mean is this, you know, respect, uh, again, stemming from from uh, the knowledge, the insight knowledge of the process. I know that if somebody, you know, conducts this research, you know, related to complex things, you know, like, like now, uh, vaccines or, or whatever, or, you know, the space and, and the physics and all that, I know they, they certainly, you know, do you have a lot of training? I know how hard it is. I know how time consuming it is to gain that training. I know how hard it is to, you know, to produce these results and and be engaged in that research. So I think it's important to know that, especially nowadays, uh, again, with all the fake news, with all the skepticism towards, you know, whatever's uh, mainstream. Uh, there are so many, you know, internet experts, uh, so to speak, who, who just quickly dismiss whatever, you know, that's scientific quickly dismiss something that's you know uh, not in line with what they choose to believe so so all of this really relates to appreciation for science and research once you understand how complex it is you kind of start to appreciate and respect these uh, these people and i think it's important and as something i mentioned just now i think this will be the final the final thing ironically i just said you know appreciate research and respect researchers uh, and this is something I, I do recommend doing and this is something I do, but, but at the same time understand that people, scientists, researchers, these so-called big names, they are just people. That's another thing I understood. You know, before that these authors would be some abstract, you know, uh, abstract beings to me, not even people. Uh, people who published, you know, books would be these, you know, abstract uh, gurus uh, for me. and. And I really, it didn't really occur to me that they are just, you know, people like me. So firstly, you can reach out to them, you can talk to them, and they may be wrong sometimes. So, so that's another thing. This is about being critical. So that's quite the opposite. So respect science, but also be critical. And if that criticism, you know, is, uh, if you have a good reason for that, you can always, you know, consider that somebody, nobody knows everything. Nobody is with no limitations and weaknesses. So that's, you know, the final thing. But overall, I would still say, you know, respect, respect science, respect research. And now, finally, I know I, I said finally probably like five times already, but I just remembered finally, I understood that PhD is not the end goal. 
So this is kind of something I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, initially, you, you tend to think that, okay, I just need that paper, that document, I'll get a job and that's it. But then, and, and if you are in that frame of mind, in fact, it's very easy to be discouraged later on because then you realize, okay, I, I can't actually get a job. What, what am I doing next? What am I going to do next? Uh, maybe I wasted the time. Uh, so, so I think uh, that's also very important. And this is something I realized that PhD is not, is not the end of it. Everything that I just mentioned in this video, I gain these skills. I keep, uh, I keep learning. I can use it, you know, to, to explore new areas. And I feel like, like I said, I evolved as a person. So I appreciate the PhD for that. And, and I hope, you know, to, to use that and, and keep evolving, keep developing as a person. So PhD was just like a push uh, in the back. So something that pushed me towards, you know, the right direction. And I really do feel like like I can now, you know, explore and do whatever I choose to explore and do. So so I really hope that, firstly, that you watch this video. It's, it's actually quite long. I can see it on my, on my camera. I hope that you watch that video and I hope that you gain something from it. I hope that it, it uh, encouraged you to reflect on the process. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear in the comments what you think you learned, how you think you changed. Maybe I can record another video or write a blog based on this because I'm really interested in how other people experience, you know, this, this kind of a, a personal transformation. So as always, uh, like the video if you enjoyed watching it and as I said feel free to post your ideas and your thoughts in the comments.